Kutika TV Africa New Age of TV Hello viewers, welcome to Kutika TV Africa We're all about informing, entertaining you and motivating your viewers So my name is Jackie And this is Kelvin So today we have a special topic that we'll be talking about You know, I have been seeing of late uh, youths going into you know depression frustration people committing suicide it's just everywhere so our main thing today what i'm going to talk about we'll be talking about depression the causes as well as the solutions if possible so viewers stay tuned because this conversation is going to be juicy and it's going to be helpful for someone out there who's going through a lot of things stay tuned we'll be back awesome. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, like I had said, I am Jackie and this is Kelvin and for some funny reason she keeps on getting on my nerves <laughs> <laughs> just before the talk. She's okay. yeah, thought provoking. Okay. Alright, so um like I had uh, already introduced, today we're talking about you know issues with depression, frustration, suicide, and you know just all these issues that are currently taking place in our country and just you know in the world. Recently, I don't know if you heard, is it Miss America, I don't know what year, she committed suicide. Miss America. Miss America, I don't know, 2020, you know, I don't know, I'm not sure. Yeah, but I come across that post, I researched a bit, and this is a person who looked bubbly, said things were happening, and you know, it's a situation where you even get to admire her life, if you look at her, you know, she's happening, she's attending different type of, you know, classy events, and you know, only to hear that she's committed suicide, which is very heartbreaking, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much heartbreaking. So yeah, <laughs> what do you think is um, causing all these things that are taking place? Because it's like on a daily basis, people are committing suicide, like youths to be precise. People are just resorting to doing things they're not supposed to be doing because, you know, having personal issues, different type of issues, and, you know, just all these crazy things are uh, going on right now. So what do you think can be the cause of depression, frustration, suicide? What are the issues surrounding this particular, you know, issue? Hmm. Okay, so technically, I think when you're trying to, like, find uh, the the cause of something, I think for something as... as as personal as maybe depression, if we can, yeah, you know, for something as personal as depression, there are a lot of causes generally because you can talk about sometimes it can be family, sometimes it can be personal issues, and sometimes it can be even childhood trauma. I'm not going to come out as an authority on depression because it's a very, very general topic and exactly. very touchy, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but in as much as you have alluded to earlier on, mm -hmm. I think we have observed so much of a trend, not just internationally, even locally, because yeah. mm -hmm. you would find something, let's say, uh, someone as a grade 12 graduate, exactly. you know, committing suicide. Mm -hmm. uh, can it be that it's the results that have caused them to commit suicide or there was something really bothering them mm. uh, beneath the surface. So it's it's a really touchy topic and I wouldn't necessarily want to come out <laughs> like a, an authority on this one unless I get myself into, yeah. into trouble or anything yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's it's a really general, the causes can be so numerous. Okay. But but I think it's it's not always as obvious to say this is what the cause of the depression and anything else. Maybe yeah. Okay, but for me personally, in as much like he said, it, it's not like we know it all, you know, these are just the main things that personally I have seen in my circle, in my personal life, and even as we'll be getting to share these things, they'll be coming from personal experience, as well as the things that we've encountered so far, isn't and it? Observed, yeah, you know, because. and for me personally, when I look at causes, I have yeah. seen issues to do with family, like you had, you know, stated family, you know, social media is also, you know, a contributing factor, and also just your personal stance, you know, what's your perception towards life, what exactly is happening? Happening, you know because sometimes I remember before this we were having a conversation and he was like you know sometimes the reasons that we have they might be unrealistic but at the end of the day we would also want to talk about that so what do you think let's have maybe family 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 yeah let's talk we about it that. <laughs> no I think we just have to talk about it because there are people who are actually going through these things but they yeah, still agree, yeah. you know don't know what's happening and you know but I would love us to talk about it because who knows someone might be able to identify what is causing their you know depression so when you talk about family what happens in our families exactly that causes us to be depressed maybe i would throw the question back to you because for me i think i can i can point out a lot on that one but 
For a start, I think even pressure is to succeed because the older you get, you know, you have various expectations from family. Mm-hmm. And those expectations might be a contributing factor. Mm-hmm. But here's a question. Maybe let me just try to, because I would also want to get some understanding from your perspective. Mm-hmm. Like, why do you think family uh, is... Okay, to what extent do you think family contributes to depression, maybe? Okay. Because I feel to say, in as much as family plays a role, yeah. uh, we need to also ascertain to say this is... You know, this is how family contributes mm-hmm. in actually, mm-hmm. you know, leading to this thing we call depression. depression because yeah. it's a problem that we can't necessarily run away from. Exactly. So it's a good place to start from, mm-hmm. family, but I would also want to understand to say, if it's family causing the depression, how is it they're oh, causing wow. that depression? Yeah, yeah, you know, that's very true. I totally get you. You know, I have been having conversations with my friends about this. You know, annoyingly, you know, where we just talk about the issues and we just find ourselves talking about these uh, issues. And I remember one of the things that we had talked about was on the issue of, you know, we can't blame anyone, but sometimes things just happen. You know, there are times when, like you had said, uh, we are growing and sometimes our families expect us you know, to achieve certain things by, you know, a particular age or within a certain period. And if we're not doing those things or if we're not, you know, yielding any results, then we tend to be pushed, you know, which is not a bad thing to be pushed, but also the approach matters. You know, for example, I'm not doing well in university, then my dad just comes, hey, you know, your friends are doing this, your friends are doing that, you're supposed to be acting like this, and you know, all those things. Forgetting to say, I also have my own weaknesses, I also have my own strengths, but there are situations quite right where maybe I'm not doing well, but what if I'm in a field that is not matching up with my strengths? Mm. You see, okay, so what if, because me, I work well with math and numbers, but the problem is I went into uh, a course that had to do with theory, but I did well, though. Okay, I did. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's an example, you know. You know, at first things were going great. I was working uh, well with, you know, theory and whatnot. But later on, you know, reading a lot of things was, you know, burdensome yeah. someone me because my strength is in calculations. Yeah, my strength is like a bunch of books. You see, you yeah, see. Now imagine me who is a mathematician if I'm put in a law course. And I'm not doing well. And my family said, my family sitting me down or asking me in a better way. They just, you know, throw stuff. Hey, your friend here, he's doing well, having A's and whatnot. And, you know, without really sitting me down to ask me, what can be the problem? Are you in the right course? What can, how can we help you? You know, I believe that also approach, if I believe if our families, and again, you know, things are crazy. Maybe that's the only way of parenting that they know. Because those are the same, you know, methods that their parents use and they are not even identifying or they are not able to notice to say them using that type of uh, an approach is actually hurting me. So, you know, this conversation like we've talked about is a broader, it's a broad conversation. So, you know, but if I'm found in such a situation where my parents or my guardians are coming to me, they are shouting at me, they are scolding me and, you know, comparing me to other people, I might find myself being depressed. Mm. You know, because I'm expecting these people to also pay attention to my emotional stability. You know, is this girl okay? You know, and you know, I believe God also, I don't know, we are coming from different types of uh, you know, families, but I feel that some some guardians, some families, they also don't pay attention sometimes to our emotional stability. You know, they just want you to do well in school, they want you to be an investor, be an entrepreneur, and look at the fact that we have a lot of youths who are doing well in entrepreneurship, making money, you know, building houses, and I'm here just trying to, you know, sell a few things. So when they look at my life, like, what are you doing with your life? How come your friends are doing better than you? You know, all those things. Instead of really asking me how I am doing, because I feel, you know, we go through a number of things. People take things differently, you know. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. anyway, I'm, I love to talk. So mm-hmm. I can go on and on and on. But what's your no, take it's, on it's, what, you know? It's, no, it's interesting because there I am. I'm listening to it. And these are really valid points, right? Okay. So if I'm looking at it from the aspect of to say there is comparison. So firstly, mm-hmm. here is one thing. Maybe if I can start from anywhere. Okay. I don't think any parent or guardian wants to see their child fail. Yeah. And it's a genuine concern. Mm-hmm. This is one reason why... I think how could I, you, you can observe to say, if you are going to ask, you know, let's say in a parent context, I've seen this even growing up. Mm-hmm. If you ask them to say, uh, say something about their child, mm-hmm. their child will always be the perfect representation to mm-hmm. their, uh, the person they are talking to, mm-hmm. to their friend. They ah, no, my child, you know, you question is, you can see him playing around, but he always knows to go to his books and stuff. Mm-hmm. There's always this perfect representation mm-hmm. and generally it's, it's okay to believe to say that's in the mind of the parent. Mm-hmm. And as you're growing up, because 
Uh, because one thing I picked out from your mm -hmm. explanation is there's so much comparison that okay. that goes on. Mm -hmm. That comparison just doesn't come out from anywhere. Mm -hmm. It starts from even inception, from early ages. Yeah. So even as the child, the person, let's say, who is going to be depressed, who is depressed in that particular situation, whatever situation, mm -hmm. it's because for so long they have been compared to other people. Exactly. And because of that, it creates a sort of... Uh, a certain level of inferiority mm -hmm, i think mm -hmm. so what happens there generally is you know because this person has grown up being compared to other people they feel that they do not really amount too much, too much too and that much. is a result of depression as well mm -hmm. so i think if you're going to look at it from that context mm -hmm. of family causing depression i think there is so much comparison and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's it, it it becomes a little tricky for them to like accept the child's strengths mm -hmm. in a way and see how they can complement them because i think they won't have any like and successful academically. Not everyone will exactly. succeed like that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's okay mm -hmm. because the child might have different strengths. Exactly. All you can do as a guardian or maybe someone in a family context, maybe a cousin or a friend or mm -hmm. something, is to see how you can help them to double down on their strengths mm -hmm. and not necessarily comparing them mm -hmm. to others in areas that they are weak. Exactly. That's and I think it's, it starts from a basic understanding because I think generally. Uh, we can see, like we have said, there are so many reasons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are so many ways in which families contribute to this thing called depression. depression we yeah. can't narrow it down to one thing. Exactly. But it's also important to understand the role we as individuals, not necessarily, I want to go to the family because I don't want to touch so much on that area. Mm -hmm. As individuals, what role do we play in the next person's life? Exactly. And beyond that, first of all, before you even go to, this is how they view me mm -hmm. and they compare me to the other person, the question should be okay but how do i view myself mm -hmm. because i think that's very very important because my your opinion of me usually should be valid mm -hmm. only to the to the extent to which i value my own opinion so it's like i want to accept what you think of me uh if it aligns to what i think of myself exactly. but sadly that's not necessarily the truth we live in that's mm -hmm. not the world we live in mm -hmm. because it's so hard it, it's easy because we live in we are Human beings are social beings for a reason. Mm -hmm. We desire that social affirmation, don't you think? Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. We desire that social affirmation. We desire to be accepted, to mm -hmm. be identified with a particular sect of mm -hmm. society. Mm -hmm. And because that is the case, often we will overvalue, in a way, well, I don't just say value, we will overvalue what the other person says because mm -hmm. if only they view us in an acceptable manner, can we fit into their circles? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But first of all, I think what we should do more to kind of avoid this uh, you know, paradigm of being depressed or this trend of depression is first of all just improve our self-image. I think that's the best way to start. Like, identify areas in which you think you don't have a proper self-image and see how you can, you know, uh, begin to see yourself differently. Mm -hmm. In a way, okay. I think that's yeah. Yeah. So apart from what you said, I still felt like also touching on family because you know we haven't. Yeah, 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 no. yeah we, we're, still, we're still we're still going there. Still like, we need to yeah. get the head on the nail, right? Is it the yeah. head on the nail or the nail on the head? Which one is it? <laughs> You know, so you we've talked about you know comparisons. What are expectations and the standard that they tend to? Our parents love us very much, and by family, I'm not only saying it's just our parents. It can be our sisters, it can be our brothers, it can be our cousins, our aunties. You know, depending on the setup of the family, isn't it? Mm. You know. So, what are certain standards that they tend to put for us? Don't you feel like the standard also? Quite right, there might be there might not be another person they are compa comparing us to. But what of maybe standards that they are setting for us? Don't you feel like also in a particular setup like that where you know they feel like I have to be here, but if I reach, you know, I don't reach that level, then you know I can get depressed or you know, just all those things. So don't you feel like also the standards that are being set in our families can be a contributing factor? Okay, so in other words, we're trying to answer the unrealistic expectation questions. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm saying unrealistic because I think to some extent, everyone, mm -hmm. generally, even you, Jacqueline, so correct me if I'm wrong. So I'll pose this as a rhetorical question because okay. Okay. I think you probably, feel free to answer it. Okay. Have you ever been in any relationship, I don't mean internet, <laughs> have you ever been in any relationship, whether friendship or otherwise, okay. Okay. <laughs> where you have had literally zero expectations? Okay. Zero expectations. I think... That was before, like sometime back when I was growing up. You know, it was just us interacting, us doing life together. So that was you like know. you in the mindset of a child, right? Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. then as you grew but older. later on, as I grew, as I got exposed, and a number of things happened to me, then you know, things began to happen. 
you know, in any form of setup, friendship, relationship or whatnot, expectations are there. They always arise, right? right? Exactly. So once you identify to say expectations are an essential or fundamental part Mm -hmm. of every relationship, Mm -hmm. I think then we can better understand to say, you know what, okay, there are these expectations, but how far should these expectations really go? Okay. Then that's when the unrealistic expectations questions Mm -hmm. comes in, Mm -hmm. our question Mm -hmm. comes in. Mm-hmm. So we often set unrealistic expectations, whether with our friends and whatnot. For instance, it's unrealistic to expect your friend to never betray you or hurt you at some point in your life, because that is definitely going to happen. It's unrealistic. Okay, that's it. That time, bad mouth me. It's unrealistic. Bad mouthing, we can put aside, but just other issues. Even other issues, maybe this person won't, you know, maybe... Get my ex, for really? instance. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> depending on the off situation. The depending on the situation. Exactly. We have those expectations of people, and when we set certain expectations and people don't meet up to those expectations of the relationship, we have to say, okay, not from this relationship or from this friendship or whatever, this is what I expect of this person. Mm-hmm. And even parents in this context, because we're talking about you know family and how they would contribute to mm-hmm. depression and whatnot. Mm-hmm. The family has an expectation. This person is going to be really successful. Oh my God, this is the person who's going to remove me from poverty. <laughs> Here I am. At my age, eh? <laughs> and I'm expected to remove the family from an undesirable, you know, place yeah. in fi- financially or whatnot, mm-hmm. or to be the perfect role model. Mm-hmm. But that's just not the reality of things. Now, because there is that expectation, first of all, there will be a certain level of disappointment that will come into the people in that circle, uh, this context of family. Mm-hmm. And because there is that disappointment, they will want to obviously air it out. And usually with the heart of, I'm concerned, I'm worried, why aren't you making the progress Mm -hmm. which we projected you would make at this age? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in airing that out, I think that's where the problem comes in because the approach now, Mm -hmm. you now begin to put so much pressure on this individual Mm -hmm. that they feel to say, oh my God, like uh, I'm panicking and Mm -hmm. it doesn't, it's not the kind of pressure that will lead someone into making action Mm -hmm. per se. Mm -hmm. But it's that type of pressure that will corner someone and make them feel useless exactly. in a way. Uh-huh. So how do we turn that table around? Mm-hmm. Do we just leave them be and not address these issues? Mm-hmm. They can dead mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. they are not going to be able to perform. You know, it's say they can do better exactly. in their life, you know. Uh-huh. You know that this person can do better. Mm-hmm. You need to talk to them, but the approach matters. So That's true. Sometimes sitting them down might not be necessary. Mm-hmm. The, the other way you can try to do it, you say, okay, yeah, I think it's a good thing. Have you considered this job? Or there is, if, you know, the person maybe has a degree and then they're sitting home and because of that, that's what, that's your concern. Let's say rhetorically, that's your question, right? Mm-hmm. The approach you can say is, okay, Muntu, I've noticed to say uh, you really needed a job. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have a friend who this, this, this and that, there is an opportunity, you can work there. Mm-hmm. So there is a way, instead of just approaching them with a problem and then mm-hmm. saying, this is the problem and it is this big, mm-hmm. I want you to identify that this problem is this big. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You actually say, okay, I know there is this problem and it can be this big, but here is the bigger solution. Mm-hmm. Why don't you try this as a solution and see how that can work for you? Mm-hmm. And I feel that way you put the person in a better place of, feeling not only empowered, Mm -hmm. but feeling that they are well capable of handling Mm -hmm. that situation they might be finding themselves in. Because in as much as we would think to say, because we would think, in my eyes, Jacqueline has got no problems going on, but I don't know what's going on in Jacqueline's mind. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on in Jacqueline's mind at a particular period in time, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But so Jacqueline might be struggling with so much in her head and I don't even know about it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So how I approach that situation that might lead to depression, why I approach various situations, mm-hmm. can either contribute to this person's mental well-being mm-hmm. or lead them further into the whole of depression. So, exactly. yeah, this is a very interesting topic. And, it is, yeah. it is, you know, and it's just so funny that we don't pay attention to these things, no? And, you know, you know what I've been learning of that? Even when I get to see certain problems or issues in my sister and my cousin, I'm really learning, you know, how to approach these issues because people are broken. Even me, just making fun of your shit can be can add to what you are going through, you know, because yes, yeah. people's hearts are being are, are very fragile at the moment. So I believe, you know, as we are, you know, families and you know whatnot, we really need to learn how to better approach these issues. You know, even just our friends. 
you know, when you know to say your friend is actually going through this thing, how can you better talk to them mm. instead of just coming out? Uh, Kelvin, you should point in at you and say, Kelvin, your friends are doing this. Uh, Kelvin, Kelvin. Uh, uh, exactly. <laughs> Bring trouble, you know, all those things. Oh, you. you know, you. there are situations where, like, yeah, trying to talk to someone and like explaining their stu- uh, your situation to them and they're like, ah, oh, wait, but me, I used to do better than you. How come? Mm. Forgetting that we are created differently. Our strengths are different, and I believe if we look at these issues from that particular aspect, then it can be a one percent positive, you know, whatever, however I can put it. So I believe as family, you know, friends and whatnot, we really need to learn how to approach these issues. And you know, I feel also family should be a place of safety, you know, where I can come to my sister and talk to her about my issue. And she's able to counsel me, she's able to teach me. But the problem is it can be that I'm expecting those things from a person who doesn't even know. Because even them, they're just trying to do like this is them doing life for the first time. Everyone is doing life for the first time. Yeah. It's not like you, you know, you're yeah? Exactly. It's not like you know, they were I don't know, Indians or Islams. No oh, yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I, I, I used to be in America before I was born, so you know we handled this situation, but everyone is doing life for the first time. So I feel also we shouldn't really play the uh, the victim of the I don't know. game. Exactly. Yeah, so I, think, I think yeah, that's a very interesting topic, but mm-hmm. we'll continue it I think after the break. So we'll take a short break, mm-hmm. and me and Jackie will try to uh, like expand a little bit more on the topic, and because we can just keep on talking and talking until I need my water. So <laughs> we'll talk right after the break. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. back ladies and gentlemen so we're having an interesting conversation so far so far so good <laughs> and you know we just had to talk about this issue so yeah we've talked about family which is a broad thing but we've only touched you know bits of it so apart from family what else social social socially induced depression mm. social media mm-hmm. i think for a start mm-hmm. because or quite a way over that um so back back when I was with Sun FM, mm-hmm. uh, we used to have a show, the youth bus. I think oh, it's yeah, still running. Right. Mm-hmm. But on the youth bus, there was um, a time whereby we talked so much about uh, social induced depression okay. because I remember sometimes you would from the social media experiences, people love to post their successes and whatnot. The pressure that's there. They don't want to come <laughs> if you want to check out the glamour life, uh, uh, and uh, then you anyway, are just on the low. Mm-hmm. You feel like you're not doing much based yeah. off of what you're picking out from there. Mm-hmm. And there is there is a way. So when I'm talking about social induced depression, however, in this context, I'm not talking about their successes. Mm-hmm. You will see so many depressed posts and memes and whatnot, mm-hmm. and then you pick up on that depression. Mm-hmm. So this goes as far as, um, so this may not be social induced depression or, whatnot, or social media depression or whatnot, mm-hmm. but even listening to certain types of music can cause you exactly. to be depressed. Because if you look at depression, it's basically... Um, a prolonged period of sadness. Mm-hmm. This is the you know, basic definition of it. It's a prolonged period of sadness, right? Mm-hmm. You can get that prolonged period of sadness by what you listen to, mm-hmm. who you talk to, mm-hmm. and basically what you read. Mm-hmm. So you can actually be depressed from different areas. So there are some who are depressed because of childhood traumas. Mm-hmm. There are some who are depressed because of families, because of society, mm-hmm. and yes, because of social media. Mm-hmm. So like. My, my only my only point of curiosity would be to say non be in a social media that like, from what angle can we really mm-hmm. try to how can we solve this problem of depression on social media really because mm-hmm. everyone is on their phone and we can agree to say most people love to use their phones mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and what you're exposed to what you encounter that you can't necessarily always control mm-hmm. so how how do you think we made so how can you, <laughs> can you how can you solve that problem okay not really solving it but i just want to make an emphasis or maybe I can just you know explain it in a clearer form you know I feel like we just have society has just just has standards there's just this thing of you know you are born you're growing up you know maturity stage or growth stage then it's like success you know everyone wants to be successful you know and we have a definition of success isn't it you know, way. exactly. Ah, that's, you that's, know, that's, that's, everyone that's, uh, wants to have money. Everyone wants to be doing well. You know, in their career, it's like that's just what life in one or another is all about. You know, happiness. Some people feel okay. Not even feel. Money creates an environment for happiness. Cash isn't is it? the world around me. <laughs> you know. So, and here is why. For me, here mm-hmm. is why I feel say, money is very, very important. Mm-hmm. Because I will give a very, very. 
I do not know how this this analogy will look to some people, okay. but I'll use it anyway. I think mm -hmm. you've heard me use this analogy once before. Mm -hmm. But see the level of disrespect mm -hmm. that will happen to a, an elderly person mm -hmm. in a family meeting mm -hmm. who doesn't have money as compared to the younger one <laughs> Who's got who has money. money. Yeah. Generally, in every, this is a very basic example, mm -hmm. like in a family context, mm -hmm. because in whatever sector in society, the person who is respected, even from the rich, middle class, even the, the people under the poverty line, if you can call them that, mm -hmm. the person who will be respected in this particular sense mm -hmm. is the one with at least some money. Some money because yeah. Is the person whose opinion will be valued. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So money is very important in that it gives you social access. It mm -hmm. gives you access oh, into yeah. various, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm, social settings. It gives you access into various classes. Mm -hmm. It gives you the power. It empowers you to actually do so much that you mm -hmm. can't do with money. Money is very important. It's very important. But it's, it can also be dangerous exactly. because it can the lack of it mm -hmm. can either destroy relationships mm -hmm. or it can even build relationships mm -hmm. in some context. Mm -hmm. And the possession of money can either destroy relationships mm -hmm. or it can build relationships. Mm -hmm. So it's about, first of all, even as I'm pursuing money, um, how do I view myself before I have that money? Mm -hmm. And how do I view myself when I have that money? Mm -hmm. Will this money affect my relationships? And will it affect the way I view myself? Mm -hmm. So the problem now when it comes to, say, the finances or the lack of success according to the circular standard of success, which is you should be financially capable, mm -hmm. stable, right? Mm -hmm. According to that standard, if you are one to be successful or considered successful, you should have some money and rightly so. Mm -hmm. You should have some money to your name because mm -hmm. only then can people see the results, right? Mm -hmm. There is money. Mm -hmm. So what really happens is when you do not have that money, you will feel worthless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You feel so limited as well. you will feel limited as well. Mm -hmm. So that's one way in which money can help contribute in that depression paradigm mm -hmm. because when you don't have this this uh, you know transaction tool mm -hmm. you feel like you are incapable of so much mm -hmm. and you limit yourself mm -hmm. you feel like your current you can't go beyond your current circumstance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and because there are people who are genuinely, genuinely trying to succeed but that's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so in such a context my my say to that person would be at least try to get some financial literacy maybe mm -hmm. but see how you can keep that money mm -hmm. See how you can best skip that money and grow it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that you try to avoid that. But in terms of, I understand it's, it's a reasonable, you know, uh, cause of, um, you know, depression or fear or sadness when you don't have this thing because it, it, it rules relationships, it rules the world around us. And it's, it's okay. It's okay to be worried when you don't have money. Actually, should, you should be more worried if you're not worried that you're broke. <laughs> you know? Exactly, I know. You should be more worried if you're not worried that you're broke. Because certain things will only work out, even certain relationships, whether family or not, they can't work out with that. So if family is putting pressure on you to be successful, it's with a good heart. Mm -hmm. But then again, you shouldn't, you know, let the fact that you're not successful yet be you down. Mm -hmm. Because you can decide to be bit down by that and you can actually stay down as a result. Mm -hmm. Because when you think to say, I'm not where I need to be, I'm not where I need to be. Your mind will register that and say, I can't be where I want to be because you're constantly telling yourself to say, I'm mm -hmm. So what you tell yourself really, really matters even in terms of success. Exactly. You know, I feel like also understanding that sometimes process differ. Just because Kelvin made that 25 and I'm able to see the results, then Kelvin okay, okay, ain't made it yet. I'm just it's, saying. Yeah, one, two, you know, it's just a one, generous... Two, <laughs> Yeah, okay, okay. It's a blessing. I'm already giving you a blessing. No, I received the prophecy, but okay, just because you know, one of my videographers made it at 25 and I'm 25 and things are not happening. And you know, like, I feel like, okay, let me just skip the beat. Yeah. You know, when I look at social media, it can be just something that's revealing, revealing something that's already there in our hearts and just yeah. adding up, you know, because away from social media, people are still struggling. You're still meeting people who are doing well. You're still meeting people who are doing different type of things. And when you look at yourself, you're not doing well. So when you go to social media, it's just a tool that's revealing what is already in your heart and just adding up, you know. So anyway, talking about processes, we go through different types of processes. Yeah. There are people who only, you know, made it at 40. You know, there are people who made it at 25. There are people who've grown up in homes where they already have inheritances. And, you know, when you look at that, you feel like you're not there, you know. But neglecting the fact that there is a process, your process might take longer than your friend's process. So I think we also have to uh, look at the aspect of, you know, embracing our individual processes. You know, we get exposed to different types of things at different stages in life. For mm -hmm. me, I started learning about um, financial literacy at, I would say, 1920 when I went to university. 
you know, one of the other people who got exposed to this at 13, for this reason, they are doing well. And when I look at my life, I'm like, God, how come I'm not using my money well? And God is like, wait, learn. And you know, when the time is right, you'll be able to do it. So I feel process also embracing different types of processes also can be a solution. You know, only also if you are humble enough. Solution to the depression or the success. Um, to the, you know, you know, these reasons for depression, like we've talked about success, because everyone wants to make it just, you know, just there and there. You know, I'm 25, I'm supposed to have money. Just because I saw someone from the West End who made like 30 and I'm 30, I'm not, you know, there. I feel like I haven't, you know, I'm not doing anything. Mm. But forgetting to say there was a process that that person followed. That person went through something that we are not even aware of. And you know, the problem with social media or what's happening out there is we're only seeing results. We're not seeing what was happening in the background, you know. And like I've said, we have to embrace our different processes. You know, this is your stage one. Don't compare your stage one to someone's stage four, you know. So that also we have to be humble enough. We also have to be, you know, I don't know how I can put it, but we have to be humble enough to just accept our current state and work harder, you know. You can be successful at 40, the other person will be successful at 50, and you might not even be successful. And also just embracing your current state. What if things don't happen? You know, what if you die tomorrow, what's going to happen? So, you know, it's just crazy. So apart from social media, you also mm -hmm. talked about the aspect of, you know, your perception, you know, your view on life. I feel like that also is a contributing factor, how you view life, you know, because some things, like we say, some things are just there to review us already in our hearts. Sometimes we're getting depressed, not because our friends are doing well, but because of your view of life. You know, maybe you can talk about that. <laughs> you, your view of life does not matter. <laughs> to be honest, it does matter. No, it, and I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not even disagreeing to that in, in any way. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, <clears throat> here's, here's the truth about life. The way you view it is the way you treat it. Exactly. Uh, same thing goes with the view about yourself. Mm -hmm. The way you treat yourself, the way you view yourself is mm -hmm. the way you will act. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same thing goes about, same idea goes about relationships. Mm -hmm. The way you view relationships mm -hmm. is the way you approach mm -hmm. your either entering or being into a relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think perception really, really, really matters. So even when it comes to, you know, trying to avoid this talk of depression and whatnot, and then you're trying to talk about the view. Mm -hmm. I think, first of all, the beginning of this, there's a particular scripture I like in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I'll rephrase it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it says, actually, these are those who compare themselves to themselves are not wise. Mm -hmm. It shows me, when I discovered that scripture, mm -hmm. those who compare themselves, those who compare themselves to themselves are not wise. Mm -hmm. When I discovered what, what that tells me mm -hmm. is comparison, actually, causes more damage mm -hmm. comparison to others causes more damage to the person doing the comparing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it shows how much you lack wisdom so when you admire someone's success without understanding their process and then you begin to compare yourself to this person based off of what you have seen either on social media or what they are able to achieve without understanding the process they went through mm -hmm. you know to succeed or to be where they are in their relationships or to be where they are in their businesses or in their career or anything like that you will cause yourself more depression than you can avoid. Mm -hmm. Because then you are trying to put yourself, you are, you are comparing your life and your unique circumstances to this person's life and unique circumstances. Mm -hmm. So their circumstances might be favorable or might have mm -hmm. not been favorable. They might have the advantage of learning certain things earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because you haven't learned those things mm -hmm. early on in life, you'll feel inferior. But what you don't understand is what they had to go through to get to where they exactly. are. And when you don't understand someone's process and then you begin to compare yourself mm -hmm. to them, mm -hmm. then you actually cause more damage to yourself than you can ever like measure up mm -hmm. and whatnot. So I think just understanding and respecting, first of all, identifying where you are in life mm -hmm. and identifying the process like you've mentioned. Mm -hmm. The process, okay, this is where I am, how, where do I want to be? Mm -hmm. I want to be on level 10. Okay, what do I need to do to, to get level. to level 10? Exactly. That is the wise way to approach life. Mm -hmm. Same thing with trying to avoid uh, maybe depression. Let's say if you want a happy relationship, for instance, and relationships with people, whether intimate or otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, what's causing you to be depressed, mm -hmm. for instance? So let's say you are in an unfriendly relationship. I don't use the term abusive. Mm -hmm. Let's say you are in an unfriendly relationship mm -hmm. where this person is probably taking advantage of you emotionally, mm -hmm. psychologically, and because of that, you are put in a corner where you can easily be depressed. Mm -hmm. the, 
the only way for you to avoid that depression or to gain that happiness is to think because we're often afraid to detach from people who are causing us some hurting to some extent and it's understandable we love familiarity mm -hmm. but it's about identifying to say what do i want okay i want to be happy in this relationship i want to succeed okay what do i do uh, to get myself out of there mm -hmm. number one step is to always detach yourself mm -hmm. from whatever is causing you that depression mm -hmm. whether it be brokenness or whether it be laziness mm -hmm. someone uh, might not be because i've talked about no if someone needs to be successful they need mm -hmm. to understand the process mm -hmm. yes but what if your problem is just that you're lazy exactly <laughs> what are you going to do about that because in god trust me no matter how many motivational speakers you exactly. listen to you will always be broke exactly mm -hmm. and if you want a happy relationship if you stay with that person causing you damage mm -hmm. Okay, like the person listening if you stay with the person causing you damage <laughs> and you want a happy relationship that is not going to happen exactly. the problem is we get so comfortable mm -hmm. with where we are that we fail to say okay you know what this place is unhealthy mm -hmm. i need to move mm -hmm. and maybe as the people surrounding these people that's what we need to understand we need to be able to bring these people to say bro I don't like where you are right now, but instead of just saying that where you are sucks, mm -hmm. I will grab you by the hand and tear. Mm -hmm. That's the better way because that way you ask, okay, I identify this problem that was mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. You help them identify this problem and as a way to make sure that they don't stay in their head, mm -hmm. you move them from the problem and say this is where you are supposed to be, mm -hmm. but to get you there, mm -hmm. I will work with you. And that is supported. That is a more supportive way of helping someone, you know, go through life in uh, and be where you think they should be, mm -hmm. but also not causing them mental damage. Exactly. Because depression can't be avoided. Mm -hmm. We put so much pressure on ourselves and the people around us, mm -hmm. and we don't notice it that it's actually affecting their lives in a negative mm -hmm. way. Our concerns. Mm -hmm. If some me, I want Jacqueline to succeed. Jackie, I want you to succeed. So I if I ever, if I ever talk down to you, <laughs> it's my human error. But because I want you to succeed. Mm -hmm. What will happen is I will probably try to push you, but mm -hmm. my approaches will not always be right. Exactly. I might put you in a position where you begin to feel so bad mm -hmm. about yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we need to see, okay, you know what, this is where I am, but for where I need to be, this is the process that I need. And if you are with someone who can't necessarily identify that process, it is now your responsibility as the person who is, um, you know, in this person's life to say, okay, no, this is what I said. If you are with a broke boyfriend, <laughs> and Valentine is coming. And Valentine is coming, eh? <laughs> Yo. Okay, now they come up here. I will, I will bring violence, eh? I'll bring violence. Okay, Let's so, um, yeah, I think we can talk about other things just briefly. We've talked about, you know, social media being a contributing factor, family being a contributing factor, your perception of life being a contributing factor. What about relationships? What's in people killing themselves because someone dumps them? And I wouldn't want also to talk about, you know, other issues. You have seen people being abused when they were young, so that can also yeah. be, but we won't touch that aspect today. But let's talk about issues to do with, you know, we're almost done, yeah? yeah. So let's... Are we? <laughs> yeah, we're almost we done. Yeah, yeah so time let's talk about... Time flies. <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about issues to do with, you know, relationships. Because I'm seeing people committing suicide because of being in your know, toxic relationships. They were disappointed. We won't talk about married people. And That's a, a different story. But we're talking about you. So for no comment, but, but, so for no okay. No, I want to get married. <laughs> but I feel that can require us to really talking about yeah, you need to it, be, you yeah, know? You know? Yeah, and you need to be yeah, this very well acquainted for certain Exactly. Reasons. You know? And some of us were yet to be married. So let's just talk about relationships. Because I'm not married. You're not married. You know? You why? Are, uh, you know, <laughs> Yeah, you know, but just, you have not experienced it yet. Yeah, so what of people who are who committed suicide? I remember someone, you know, got uh, uh yeah, someone got dumped and they end up committing suicide. Yeah, you know? so even on this term of suicide, I don't know. I was thinking about it mm -hmm. last night as we were talking. Eh? Mm -hmm. So I thought about this because First of all, you send very long DMs. I know. That's my, that's my area. Oh God. So I was, I was thinking, I was thinking about something. Okay. Um, university, Mulungush University. So that's the school I'm currently studying at for those who, who don't know. Mulungush mm -hmm. um, University, there was a case during this previous semester and um, two suicides mm -hmm. were, were there. Okay. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons for one of the people, according to the stories that were circulating, mm -hmm. this might be true, this might not be true, mm -hmm. an unnamed person mm -hmm. 
committed suicide because they were having low grades and then they advanced into their you know academic life but they were having issues that they couldn't necessarily talk about with mm-hmm. their guardians mm-hmm. that caused them to be depressed and as a result they were flunking school oh. you know so this person when the guardians mm-hmm. you know found out about that mm-hmm. I do not know how they approached it. They might have done it in the right way or mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. But all I know is that interaction sort of prompted the person to commit suicide. Yeah. The second scenario mm-hmm. uh, that I heard about, I think this one was, I heard it from, I think, the dean mm-hmm. uh, during, uh, yeah. And it was a case of someone committing suicide because of a relationship. Mm-hmm. Uh, this person apparently did something to this person. Mm-hmm. Um, that we will not get into it wasn't rape mm-hmm. but they did something that really scarred this person mm-hmm. and they would be scarred and the person ended up committing mm-hmm. suicide so in terms of relationships and so I'll, I've brought out the family setup mm-hmm. deliberately and I've brought out their intimate kind of relationship setup deliberately mm-hmm. one thing we do not notice is first of all our actions in whatever relationships we're in how so much of an effect to the next person more than we are ever identified. Mm-hmm. So here's the danger of an intimate relationship. So there's an intimate relationship or love is type of relationship where in the this we're talking about love. Everyone's all about love. Mm-hmm. Valentine's is coming. Mm-hmm. Hooray. <laughs> but the thing about being in a relationship is you are putting yourself at a place where you are vulnerable to the next person. Mm-hmm. Whereby whatever this person says, does will mean so much to you. Mm -hmm. So if that person ends up doing something that is negative toward you, Mm -hmm. that will carry so much weight on you and you'll Mm -hmm. feel different kinds of emotions like betrayal, anger, deception. You'll feel like this person has taken advantage of you Mm -hmm. or you'll feel like this person doesn't value you. Mm -hmm. And even just that thought of feeling, say I'm not valued by my partner, Mm -hmm. is reason enough to Mm -hmm. cause depression in someone. And we don't notice it. So like for the people, Here's, here's my perspective, it might not be your perspective, but if you're a gentleman, I'll speak for the gentleman, if you're a gentleman and you're in a relationship with someone, your number one responsibility towards that person is to protect them emotionally, mentally, mm-hmm. and as a person. It is not to take advantage of them, mm-hmm. it is for, for you to see how it is that you can be a part of their life in everything that they do. You support them either financially, you support them either emotionally, you support them in terms of security, you are supposed to build that person. Because what you do to that person can tremendously affect the course of their 10 years. And that's what we don't notice. Mm-hmm. There's more encounters. Some people have had testimonies by a 30-second encounter with mm-hmm. someone. Mm-hmm. And their lives changed tremendously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the question is, was that a positive change or a negative one? Mm-hmm. Because you do not know what someone is going through and how much just one single action can contribute mm-hmm. to their state of mind and their state of being. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... We identify to say this is a possibility. Now, how do we... But there are solutions. If you're not paying attention, you'll probably miss this. Mm-hmm. If you're in a relationship with someone and it's causing you such a level of negativity, if you're probably... I don't want to say victim because you're only the victim to the extent you want to be the victim or you allow yourself to be the victim in some cases. This is not like a gospel trip. But most of the times, I think we put ourselves in such situations eh, where like, you know this person is not good for you. Get rid of the nin- uh, the the ninja. <laughs> the ninja. <laughs> Get rid of the ninja. Yeah. Like avoid him. Eh? It's not like, easy. You know, it's not easy. If you are in a place whereby it's not benefiting you emotionally or mentally, live. Exactly. Same thing with success and whatever. If you feel to say I'm broke right now and I need to be better, leave that place. It's always up to you. Overall, yeah. overall. First of all, your first of all, this is my belief and this is how I approach life. It doesn't mean that I haven't been, you know, depressed or sad before. I have been for the most actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2019 was a terrible year if I can tell you that. 2018, 2019 was full of this emotional trauma, heartbreak. Nah, let's, let's not even go there. Mm-hmm. But one thing I have come to notice, Jacqueline, mm-hmm. is <laughs> like it or not, you are the determinant of whether you will be happy or successful mm-hmm. or whether you will be in a desirable situation, you know, desirable position in life. Mm-hmm. What I believe, in as much as we need other people to compliment us and to help contribute to our happiness, mm-hmm. overall happiness I think should come from yourself. Mm-hmm. You should be happy with yourself first of all. Mm-hmm. If you want to be successful, you should be successful firstly within. Mm-hmm. So uh, 
selfish plug. I released the song called Much mm-hmm. The goal of that song, and this is why I think many people like it, you can check it out on Investisani, mm-hmm. free advertisement. <laughs> check it out on Investisani. Mm-hmm. So the song Much Palakas, which simply means the mind, mm-hmm. shows you to say, if you are in a particular situation or circumstance, mm-hmm. the best way you can get yourself out of that situation or circumstance is first of all by dealing with whatever is bothering you mentally mm-hmm. and actually making the necessary steps to get out, mm-hmm. to get yourself out there. Mm-hmm. And this is just my take. Yeah, this way, okay, I know I would love us to talk about it more because I feel there's still a lot of things that we wanted to talk about but I would yeah, love us to have a conversation really, really, like that. It's a really good yeah, topic. But also I believe, which these are my last remarks, therapy is also important. You know, it's not easy to just come out of a relationship or for you to just, yeah, talk to you know, someone. yeah, it's not easy for you to just wake up and start working on yourself, looking at the fact that there are a number of aspects of factors that are leading to a depression. So therapy is very important. Talk to someone, you know, if you don't know anybody, you don't trust people, you don't know, talk to people from church. Me, I'm a believer. I love church. You know, talk to your pastor, but sometimes but, talk to God. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. God, yes. But I feel like God mm-hmm. uh, made us. Uh, created community so that yeah. you can be accountable to we're each social, other. We're social yeah, we're social beings. So talk to someone, you know, people out there are willing to listen to you, but also pray if you're a believer, pray that the Lord did you to someone that you need to talk to. You know, and yeah, I don't know what other solutions with the therapy, the, yeah, talking to people, them. you know, and I feel also just through our conversing and conversation, we have talked about solutions and bits. And if you're paying attention, I believe you have picked one or two things. But I would love us to have a conversation like this again because there are a lot of things we have, you know, left out. So, guys, this has been Kutika TV Africa. We're all about informing you, entertaining you, and motivating you. So, from Jackie and from Kelvin. Until next time, keep uh, watching us. Uh, keep watching Kutika TV Africa, <laughs> and this okay. is the fun part about it. No edits. I know. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Have a have a good one.